Good morning, morning, mor oh, Alexa, off. <laughs> I almost forgot to turn off my music. I am always just like sitting right here. Good morning, Linda. I'm always just sitting here and I'm like trying to, you know, get myself all energized and I have my music on and I'm like, what is that that I hear in the background? Well, that was my energizing music. So we had to turn that off because Indy has my little princess right there has just been like, hey, mom. Hey, mom. What are you doing, mom? And I'm like, I don't have time to to take you outside because I don't know about you, but I have the only dog, I think I have the only dog in the world, which I know I don't, who absolutely refuses to go outside by herself. She thinks going outside is a team sport. And I'm like, Indy, you're a dog, you're a puppy, you're supposed to be outside, you're supposed to be frolicking around. And she's like, oh my gosh, mom, that sounds so amazing. Let's go. And I'll be like, no, Indy, I got things I gotta do. You gotta go outside, you gotta be brave, you gotta be bold, you have to just go outside and do your puppy stuff. And she's all like, mm, no, no. I want you to come with me. So, <sighs> welcome. Welcome to the Wednesday Morning Live. And I've had just kind of one of those mornings, you know, you know the mornings I'm talking about, where I woke up, same time as always, went to the gym, just like I always do, came home, and in my mind, I'm like, wow, I've got all this time in the world. You know what? I've got endless hours and minutes to just sit here and work on stuff. You know what? I'm going to do all of these like little admin things. I've got so much time. And then I looked at the clock and I'm like, I don't have that much time. So I was like getting ready, getting dressed. And here I sit before you. Oh, so now what are we going to talk about today? We have all sorts of fun stuff we're going to talk about today. But the main subject that we're going to be talking about today is I am going to break down the outfit and talk about the comment of that I got on another platform, not this one, not this one, but where I showed this outfit and the response from the lady was, um, I know you have boys, but do you think if you had girls, you would embarrass them because you're trying to dress like them? And I'm like, uh, rude. And so I want to kind of deep dive into that a little bit because I know that that's a philosophy um, behind a lot of people's thinking. And I know that it's a comment that people get quite often. So today we're going to look at the outfit. We're going to kind of analyze it a little bit. I think it's an adorable outfit. And then we're going to kind of just look at my fashion history and where I got my motivation and where maybe you can find motivation for you to be like, you know what, society, and I think her name was like Lisa something. You know what, you can just sit there and have your opinions, and I'm going to dress however I want. So that's what we, hello, Jenny, that's what we are going to be talking about today. Now, first and foremost, before we get into that, I was on my phone because, again, I thought I had all this... Uh, endless amount of time to sit here and do all sorts of things. But I saw that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle got chased by the paparazzi and got into a car accident last night in New York City. And I'm like, Phew. I mean, that is like the exact same thing that happened to his mom. And I felt so heartbroken for them. I mean, it's like, it's just like history repeating itself. And I was so sad and I'm so glad they are okay. But I guess um, it was a pretty, there's like very limited information about what happened. But according from what I've been reading, it was a pretty, um, pretty um, bad car accident. And I'm just like, golly, 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 golly. You know what? That just it just, it breaks my heart. And I've always had a fascination with the royal family. I think that there's just something about it that is just very intriguing to me. And then her marriage to the now king reminded me a lot of my marriage to my ex-husband. So I was very, I've always kind of had this like, um, kind of like connection with Princess Diana because I felt like her marriage was very much like mine. And then she had... Um, you know, the two sons, I have two sons, and I don't know. I mean, I just remember watching her get married, and I remember watching her her funeral and just following the family. So anyway, that was my little emotional heartstrings, and I'm like, 
oh my gosh, Harry and Megan, I hope you're okay. So sending good wishes, healing vibes. Um, I hope you are okay. Lauren says, let's hope their children um, wasn't in the car with them. Fingers crossed. No, I believe they were at a function last night. And um, so it was, uh, Megan was getting an award and it was her and Harry. And then um, apparently, yeah, Linda, I heard that her mom was in the car also. But I, from the little bit that I got a chance to read, I guess that the paparazzi was chasing them for quite a while. And to me, and the only thing I'm going to say, because you know what, I can't just stop there, but um, they really need to have some sort of security. You know what? They need to have protection. And I know that there, he's no longer a working royal in the family, but he's still Princess Diana's son. So to me, King Charles, if you're listening, you need to get your son some security because I'm telling you, that is so, like, it's scary scared me. Let's just put it that way. All right. So let's just see here. Oh, what do I want to say? What else do I want to say? And then, okay. Cause again, this is the morning I had. The morning I had was like, oh, you have all this endless time, Lonnie. Just continued looking on the, the news and the internet and see what happened. And uh, this one, I won't say it made me feel old because I don't like that statement, but this one really made me stop and be like, but I saw that Tori Spelling from 90210 um, just turned 50. And I, this is me. I'm looking on my phone. Let's just pretend like this is my phone, okay? This little pack is my phone. I'm like, what? Okay, if she's 50, how old am I? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to like stop and remember how old I am. Because I remember watching 90210 when I was pregnant with Brandon. And yes, that is where I came up with Brandon's name. He knows it, so I don't hide it. But I remember watching them as like portraying high school people. So in my mind, I'm thinking that they were like 15 or 16 when they were filming 90210 which apparently they were not because she just turned 50. So she's only eight years younger than I am. And I'm just like, wow, ah, that just really kind of sunk in that uh, she's turned 50. And I'm just like, this is, <laughs> and like I said, it made me stop and be like, hmm, do I need to take out my driver's license and figure out how old I am? Because for me, age is has absolutely... It doesn't, I mean, I know how old I am and the experiences that I've had, but it doesn't stop me from being who I am. And so I am so in that mindset. See, look, we all have this, ladies. I'm telling you right now, this is, for me, it is just something that I don't really care, but we're going to talk about this later on today. But I, for women, they're so embarrassed about their their arm flabble flabble, and I don't care. You know what? I don't care, but we'll talk about that. I'm jumping ahead, but I was sitting here and I'm watching, I can see my playback, and I'm like, oh, hey, look, my little arm is waving hello to everybody. Hello. So I was just, like I said, every once in a while, I have to stop because I don't, uh, I don't focus on how old I am. I just don't do it. And that, okay, little side note, you know the spinoff from Sex and the City? Um, I can't remember the name of it. Well, I tried watching that, and I am always pro, like, women my age and all of that. But the thing that got to me on that series is that they were always talking, uh, they were always saying their age, all right? They would walk into, thank you, King Kong, um, they would always walk into a room and be like, hi, my name is Carrie and I am 52 years old. And I'm like, no woman that age does that. All right. Nobody walks into a room and constantly has a conversation about how old they are. All right. We have sentences without mentioning our age. And while I absolutely applaud, um, <laughs> I applaud the pro over 50 women movement and message that that series had, I think that they could have done it in a way that it wasn't just always like, 
you know what, I'm going to continuously say how old I am. So that was just my little side note. Linda says, in Britain, they're called bingo wings. Well, I always think like, to me, they're kind of remind me of like a flying squirrel. So if I like jump off of a building and I need to like glide down, I'll just be like, whoosh, then I'll just glide down. And you know what? My little arms are my superpower. So there you go. All right. So let's see. Oh, last thing I want to do is I want to talk about my eye makeup today because I am all about my eye makeup. And this right here is um, purple. I did purple today and I absolutely love it. And it's a combination of two different colors. I got this little, um, it's a e.l.f. product and this is a an eyeshadow but it's like a paste it's not the powder you know what I'm talking about um let's see M says I'm getting my first tattoo today any advice yes give me two seconds um so it's a powder no it's like um it's not a powder and it's not a liquid it's like a paste and I know it has a name um I know it has a name but I can't think of it right now golly jeepers anyway so it is a purple base that I put on. And then from Revolution, I got this really cool palette at Marshall's. And it's a cream. Yes. Okay, Courtney, thank you. I was sitting here struggling and I'm like, not a liquid, not a powder. All right. If you put them two together, you get a, <laughs> you get a cream. All right. So it's an eyeshadow cream. So I have that on first, and then I have it with this really cool purple. And this is, again, this is from Revolution, and the palette is from the School of Good and Evil. So I went totally bright and purple. All right, really quick, we're gonna get to a question. And, um, oh, okay. Really quick, we're gonna get a good question and advice for your first tattoo. Here you go. Eat a good breakfast. Absolutely make sure that you have a good, healthy breakfast. Wear something comfortable. Absolutely. Um, absolutely wear something comfortable. Bring healthy snacks. Go and get like a protein bar. Get a little thing of hard candies. Bring water. Bring a jacket because you're going to get cold. Um, absolutely have fun, remember to breathe, and most importantly, remember to communicate to your artist. If you wanna move, if you have questions, if anything like that, make sure that you address it with your artist, but just make sure that you, your body is well-fueled. Don't go like super cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs on a heavy breakfast, but have some oatmeal or banana or a healthy, like a, a juice or something like that. And make sure you bring those snacks so you can keep fuel in your body and then water. That is like, super important. And remember to breathe. It's not going to hurt as bad as you think. I mean, the first like little line might be shocking. After that, easy peasy. Um, Deb wants to know where your top is from. I got this from Free People. And I have had this forever. And I found it at Marshall's. It's like a little slip top. And I absolutely love, love, love. Now, um, YouTube, I have a question for you. I started, because I show my outfit every single day, all right? I show um, what I'm wearing. So what I've decided to do is I'm doing a longer form video. Um, the shirt in your TikTok from yesterday. Well, you're making me remember what I wore yesterday. And yesterday, oh, oh, yesterday was just a little freeway tank. Yesterday's TikTok was just a little black freeway tank from Free People. Oh, the Hawaiian type shirt. All right, again, let's see, drum roll. Free People. And that one is, let me get you the name of that one because these are amazing button down shirts. And these are... All right, give me two seconds because it's a specific button down and um, I wanna make sure that I get you the right information because it is amazing. I have it in three different colors. Oh, my Lanta. Well, just a moment and I will, let's see, let's see, let's see. 
Let's see, let's see. How am I going to figure it out? Because free people, let me pull it up here. Hold on, hold tight. Talk amongst yourselves. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to find the um, the actual name of it. I get extra smalls because they do run big. And let's see here. So it is uh, free people button down. Let's see if we can't have a little bit of luck and figure it out right away. And this is called... Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. It's the free people share good vibes button down. They come in all sorts of floral patterns. They are amazing. I'll put a link down below um, after the um, after the live is over. But yes, free people share good vibes. I get an extra small. I usually get my tops in a small, something like that, because I have this really weird thing about having tops that are too tight. Um, I get an extra small. It fits perfect. And um, like I said, I have three of them in three different patterns, and that's how much I absolutely love them. All right, so let's get into our main subject of the day. And our main subject of the day is the comment that I got from a um, picture that I posted and this lady and she had been, she had followed me for a while and I had seen comments from her in my DMs on Instagram for quite a while and she was always very negative, all right? She always had just the most just the most negative comments. Everything, everything that she said had like a little bit of a um, spice to it. And I always ignored her. You know, I figured if she, if she was that miserable and she was just that sad, she needed to follow me because maybe I could give her some inspiration and maybe I could just, um, maybe she would start to learn to love herself. All right. That was the delusional thinking that I was thinking because I didn't block her from the very beginning. So I um, put a little post, you know, no big deal. It was just a um, picture of me. Let me show you my outfit so you can see what I am referring to. And doo -doo -doo. all right. It was just this cute little outfit. Look at this cute little outfit. It was it was a denim top. So it's the denim halter top. And I wanted to do a denim and denim. So I got my jeans and then I had my cute little Doc Martens on with my sunglasses and that cute little um, purse that I got from thrifting the other day. And I was like, well, you know what? This is really cute. I feel sassy. I feel fun, you know? I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give a little inspiration to, um, ha, Courtney. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about. Um, so I'm going to give a little inspiration of like, Hey, you know what? Just have fun with fashion, be yourself. And the comment that she, she, she left me and she has since deleted it. And I'm kind of bummed that I didn't take a screenshot of it, but in short, her comment was, I know that you have sons, but if you had daughters, how do you think they would feel about you trying to dress like them? And um, I think she said something along the lines and like trying to act like you're younger or something like that. Courtney, you might remember better than I do. But I was just like, wow. Um, Glitter Knickers says, I think you look absolutely beautiful. Well, thank you very much. But I was like, wow, you know what? That's enough, all right? I've had it. I'm gonna draw my little line in the sand and I'm just gonna say no more, all right? I don't usually respond or clap back to negative comments very often because for one, I think that that's what they're looking for. They're looking to get a reaction out of me. And if I give them a reaction, they get to be like, oh, I did it. I ruined her day. I made her not like her outfit. Score one for me. 
And I'm like, no, that's not how it works in this world, in this universe, all right? And I'm getting all hot, and I'm just like, because you know what? Sometimes I'm just like, I'm human, and they all get to me. But I'm like, that's it. Draw a line, Sam. So my response to her was, I've seen your comments. I know what you're saying to me. And if you are trying to communicate to me in a nice way, but you're just doing it wrong, because I always give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Maybe people are not good communicators, all right? Um, maybe they would, um, I, I mean, maybe they're just trying to say things, but they're saying it wrong. You know what? Again, a benefit of a doubt. So I gave that to her. I'm like, maybe you're trying to say something, but you're saying it wrong. And if that's the case, you need to start rewording your comments. But if you're not, if you are trying to be rude, just save me the time and I will block you now. So I felt very good about holding up for myself because I'm like, but, and giving her the benefit of the doubt at the same time, all right? Because again, I'm not gonna give her the satisfaction of thinking that she got to me. No, 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 no. That ain't gonna happen. Linda says, it sounds like she was envious of people who can express themselves through clothes. And I 100% agree with you on that, Linda. And that's one of the reasons why I don't usually clap back in a mean way. Because, I, see, and here's the thing. It's like, I don't take it personal. I'm not putting posts of my outfits on the internet for the world to see and the world to judge for me to get validation of it's a cute outfit, all right? I love my compliments. I love my platform and I love it when you when y'all are like, I love that outfit. And I'm like, yeah, me too. But I do that in order to, um, I do it in order to inspire other women and other people to be like, if she can do it, I can do it. If she can find her self-expression through fashion, I can find my self-expression through fashion because I'm guaranteeing you right now that my fashion is not for everybody. And I'm having a hot flash. By, um, my fashion is not for everyone and that's perfectly okay, but it's for me. And for example, I was going to wear that that outfit today. I was gonna be like, I'm wearing this outfit for you because you know what, look at me, I can wear it anytime I want. And I put it on and it did not look the same way that, um, it did not look the same way as it did in that picture. I did not have the same energy level wearing that outfit. I put that outfit on and I was sitting there and I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like this today. And that is so, what is so cool about fashion is, is that your outfits need to represent who you are on that day. I'll wear that outfit again. I don't, don't worry about that. That outfit's a cool outfit, but it wasn't today's cool outfit. So when you are looking for your, for your look of the day, make sure it matches who you are that day. And if that outfit doesn't match you that day, put it back, wear it another day. Just make sure what you wear today agrees to you. All right, Lauren says, has she stopped DMing you now um, though? Yes, yes she has. In fact, I believe she blocked me because I went to go um, look at her profile and, um, it, and it said that I was blocked. So apparently she took it upon herself to save me the step of having to block her. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much for taking the kind step of saving me the, the bother of having to block you. So let's get into this just a little bit more because I wrote out some things I wanna to talk to you about it. And it's empowering things that I want you to know and I want you to hear so you can think of these things when you're getting dressed and you can think of these things when you're thinking about your own outfits all right so let's let's deep dive first and foremost she said if i had daughters would i be embarrassed or would they be embarrassed and that made me think about me thinking about my mom's fashion my mom was a fashion was a fashionista my mom is where i got my inspiration for fashion. 
My mom was 82 years old when she passed away and her closet could have rivaled any one of your closets. She did not shop according to age and she did not shop according to size. You know, she shopped wherever she wanted. You know, I can remember her being in the hospital and part of the things that we did while we were passing time is we would shop online. And she found a pair of overalls that she liked from Target and I bought them for her. And unfortunately she never came out of the hospital to wear them, but I still have them sitting in my closet and uh, and every once in a while I'll wear them. And I'm like, you know what? I wasn't embarrassed of, about that. I was empowered by that. I was empowered by the fact that my mom was so confident in her style and in herself that she gave me the confidence to be uh, uh, to be myself. That's what I'm trying to say. So, you know, these people come at me with all these comments about like, oh, you would embarrass your daughter. And you're like, no, no, no. I would empower my daughter. I would tell my daughter to you wear exactly what you want. Maybe her style would be polyester, like what Lisa wears, you know? I mean, that could be her style at 20, and I would empower her to wear that because that's what makes her comfortable. And so I'm like, yeah, no, no, you, you, you got, got wrong on that one. And then another thing that I did is because it, it did, okay, her comment gave me a little itch in the back of my brain, all right? Because I go through life and I always think that um, that Robert and Brandon are okay with my style choices, that Robert and Brandon are okay with my tattoos, and that Robert and Brandon, and if you don't know, those are my two sons, are okay with, with everything here. So Brandon was in Arizona, but Robert was here. So I asked him, I said, Robert, you know, I got this comment and I just want to just check in with you out of respect for you. Um, do I ever embarrass you? And he's like, no. He's like, I love your style. He goes, I love that you're an individual and you show your self-expression through your style. And he's like, trust me, if you came out with something that made me uncomfortable, I would be like, hmm, not today. And I get it. I mean, he does and that's like, he has a comfort level. I mean, he has a comfort level with, with me and I, as respecting him and as an adult and my child, I would respect that. I mean, if he were to be like, I'm not really too comfortable with you, you know, walking out in a bikini and high heels, I, I would, I just heard something weird. I would be like, okay, then I'll go change. Cause like I said, I respect him. And that's a big difference than from him being like, um, don't show your individuality or something like that. So I checked in with him and I was, you know, I already knew what the answer would be. And he said that my style was fine. So, you know, I definitely, that was again, a wrong statement. So it also too, I want you to, to think of something really super important because a lot of times I get a lot of comments about how, women, especially young women, like in their 20s or their 30s, when they become a mom, they sometimes lose their individuality, all right? You kind of just go from, you go from being you to being somebody else's mom. And a lot of times I get a lot of comments of, from women stating like, I want to wear this and I want to wear that, but you know, I don't want to embarrass my children or the other moms at the pickup line look at me weird. And here's what I want you to stop and think, all right? I want you to stop and look at it in a different way. And the way that I want you to stop and look at it is what message are you giving your daughter, all right? Now, if you wear, if you wear whatever you aesthetically want, if you wear your ripped jeans and your band t-shirt and your Doc Martens 360 days, a year and that's what your style is what you're doing is is that you're showing your children that they can be confident in whatever version of them that they are all right if you feel insecure if you are like gosh I'd love to wear that but you know what Nancy looks at me weird so I'm gonna wear something else that's the message that you're teaching your children and so to me 
being individual, being that you are just shining in your own self version of you, regardless as to what any other mom in the pickup line looks like, you're instilling confidence in your children to be individual and be themselves. I mean, people get bullied and picked on when they're insecure about the way they look. So to me, it's like, I don't know. I think we get bullied and picked on even in our adult life. And if we can handle it in a way of where we're just like, yeah, Lisa, you know what? You're not going to, you're not getting to do that today. We will inspire our children. Just like my mom inspired me to be me today. Just like I inspire Robert and Brandon to be whatever form or fashion they want to be. You will also to, um, you will also to inspire your children to do that. So if you are that young mom in the pickup line and you want to wear whatever you want, I say do it, shine bright, show by example that you can be you and your children are going to learn that and they are going to pick up on that and that is going to be the best lesson that you can teach your children. And I 100%, that's just, that is a passion of mine. Now, talking about women supporting women, women supporting women, we need to encourage each other. Um, oh, Valerie says, I just want to say I love you and how you always take the high road. You know, to me, Valerie, it is so important. And this goes back to an episode that a live that we did. Um, oh, the live that I did on Monday when I talked about living with my ex-husband who was really mean to me and, you know, how I, I he was taking advantage of my energy. I look at these people just like I look at somebody if I was in a relationship with somebody who was saying mean things to me. This is my energy. I am not going to share it with anybody. You're not going to trick me to get angry when I choose not to be angry. Now, if I wake up one day and if I choose violence and I'm going to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to respond to every negative comment I get and I'm going to rip them all. Um, I'm going to be like and tell them all where to go. That's my choice. That's my choice to wake up and fight back. But I am not going to be tricked into responding to those comments. And this reminds me, and I'm going to tell you this story that it reminds me of. Um, I practiced yoga for many years. And one of the things that I loved most about yoga was like story time. And we had to all pick these cards one time. And I picked a card of, it was um, like this, oh gosh, I'm going to try to re re recap the story as best as possible. But it was a story of somebody who it was being tricked by anger. And anger was like this, like um, a fiery, fire-breathing dragon. And this dragon would go and trick this person into being angry and because they thought that, that their, their strength was in their anger. I know I'm not doing a very good job, but you're going to get the idea. And I'm like, wow, you know what? Anger isn't my strength, and I'm letting everybody trigger me and make me angry and it's taking all this energy from me and I'm getting exhausted and I don't want to do that anymore and that is why when these people come at me hello the slave nana oh hello my friend how are you um that is why when people come at me I'm like no I'm not going to give you my energy I am not going to give you my anger I am not going to give you that negative response that you are so desperately looking for and I just won't do it I it, it it makes me feel it makes me feel less powerful if I let them get to me and I'm all about I'm all about saving my energy and um no they don't get to do it they just don't get to do it and here you go here's my arm again all right so, um, I'm good. Hope you are as well. I am. We're having a great live. Now, um, what do I want to talk about? Oh, women supporting women. Have you all seen this? And this is the epitome of I am just in awe. Let me show you what I'm talking about. 
So, have y'all seen the new cover ah, of the Sports Illustrated magazine? I am so proud of Martha Stewart and the simple fact that she, at 81 years old, is on the cover of Sports Illustrated. And I think that that is just amazing. And I know, see, there she is right there. And I know that there's a lot of people out there who are probably just not being very kind to her and probably are like, oh, you're too old to do that. But what a beautiful representation of how women can mature and just be like, um, and just be themselves and just be so empowered at 81. And I am so, I, I won't say that I was always a huge Martha Stewart fan. I mean, I'm not the most, I'm not a domestic goddess, all right? I don't sit there and I don't really connect um, like, we don't have the same hobbies. Let's just put it that way. But man, I will tell you, kudos to you, Martha Stewart. That was amazing. And that inspires me to to do more. You know what? That doesn't make me want to leave a, a mean comment or be like, you know what? You shouldn't do that at your age. No, no, no. It makes me... Um, yeah, you know what, Martha Stewart did make something of herself. And I was like, you know what, maybe I can try more fashions and styles than I thought I could. You know what, had I have not seen that and Sports Illustrated call me and been like, hey, Lana, you want to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated? I might have been like, mm, I don't know, I don't know if I should. I'm just joking, I would have. But she would have inspired me even more to do it. And on, if, on whatever level I can and whatever connections I get to do this, I like to do the same thing. Now, on the comment that the lady left me, I have an amazing platform. I have an amazing platform. And I don't know if you know this or not, but out of my platform, I think all together across all platforms, I have close to 1.2 million followers. That's a lot of people. And the most amazing statistic out of all of that is that 89% of those 1.2 million people are women. And I have an amazing platform of beautiful women who are so supportive and they're so protective. Because when she said that comment, women were like, blah, 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 just instantly. And the reason that I'm telling you this is because on one of the comments, one of the comments that somebody left was, you have a haircut that screams, give me, wait, let me, I have to say it right. One of the comments was, you have a haircut that screams, I want to talk to your manager. And she was spot on. She absolutely had one of those haircuts. And I deleted that comment. And I deleted that comment because I don't ever want anybody to feel bad about the way they look, even when they're being mean to me. And to me, it's like she already is insecure. I don't want to make her any more insecure. So I personally think that, and I personally find that I find more strength in kindness than I do in anger. And I will I will always try to live by those words. Like I said, some mornings, and trust me, you don't ever want to make me mad. I, um, I have a wicked, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Gosh, I keep doing that today. But I, I mean, I grew up defending myself. I have very good defense mechanisms, but I just don't choose to use them. But I always appreciate it when anybody helps me and, um, and you know, and sometimes I'm like, I don't need to respond because I've got, you know, over a million women who are going to do that for me. And I always just like, yeah. And then another time I will delete these comments is when you upset my platform. If somebody says something that is really super mean and I can see that it is upsetting, 
the people who are reading it, I'll delete it because I don't want to upset my platform. And it's more important to make sure that you all can be a part of my world in a manner that you're comfortable with than to have somebody's, you know, somebody's mean comment um, be setting up there. So that's another reason why I will delete a comment. But that was my outfit. That was the comment. And really, really, really what I want to get across today and the, the really important message on this whole episode is that we cannot get dressed every morning worrying about our, um, our clothes and what other people are going to think. Like I said, I tried putting that outfit back on this morning and it wasn't working with my energy. It didn't, it did not represent who I wanted to be today. I took it off. I'll wear it a different day. All right. Temper. Yes. Oh, I do have a temper, but I have learned to control it. All right. So, um, every day when you wake up, I want you to think about you and I want you to think about what is going to make you happy. What is going to bring you joy? What outfit is going to best coffee's done? What is best going to represent you for who you are today? We cannot worry about what people like that are going to think. We cannot worry about what other moms in the pickup line are going to think. We cannot worry about what the women in the nail salon think when I come walking in and I've got more tattoos than the na than a whole lot of people. And we can't worry about that because it robs us of our happiness. And happiness is so um, precious. You know, happiness isn't something that everybody has. It's not a guarantee in life. So if we need to, um, it, 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 we need to just cherish that and we need to do what we can to keep it because otherwise, it, it, otherwise opinions and thoughts about what other people are going to think, just, they ro it robbed you. It robbed you of your happiness. Um, it takes a lot of work to control a temper. I relate. Yes. You know what? Sobriety helped. Um, therapy helped, um, my platform has helped, and I definitely, definitely have worked on my temper. So now let's get to a couple comments because I don't want to spend the entire time telling you all what a horrible temper I have because that's not, um, that's not something that I want to uh, focus on right now. So, okay, so some of the comments that we are going to be talking about today... Um, okay. So Kelly Taylor, 95, 41, this is about the TikTok and this short that I did yesterday. And I, Oh, YouTube, I have a question for you. I do have a question for YouTube. Now I'm doing my outfit of the day. I'm doing a short and then I'm doing a longer video. What are your thoughts on that longer video? I've already recorded mine today and I was going to do a voiceover. Um, so What's your thoughts? I just want your opinions. And I'm going to be recording a longer video for you all too. So, but let me know. I'm just really curious. I like the idea because I think when I'm talking about my outfit, it takes more than 15 seconds to show you my outfit and why I picked everything together. But that's just my opinion. But I'd love to know your opinion. All right. So from my um, video yesterday. Oh, cool. You love it? Yes. All right. See, I liked it. And then those little itty bitty voices in the back of my head, first thing this morning was like, I mean, that was a really stupid idea. You shouldn't have done that. Nobody's going to like it. And then I'm like, you know what? No, I'm not going to listen to myself. I'm not going to listen to those negative voices. And I am just going to be positive and keep on going. Um, oh, okay. Valerie. Yeah, no, we, we don't allow, uh, apparently um, we can't use camps. <laughs> Gives us all the content. Yes, I will definitely keep doing it. All right. So from my video yesterday, um, Kelly says, um, love the look. That's a really great purse and bag. So from yesterday, I had that little carpet bag that belonged to my mom. And it's so funny because I'm doing this video and I was like showing you all the purse and I'm sitting here and I'm pulling out trash bags out of the purse. And then it re my mom always, whenever she wasn't, um, Whenever she wasn't um, using a purse, she would stuff it full of the um, grocery bags to keep its shape. So I absolutely had 
so much joy pulling out those little trash bags from that purse. But that, that little carpet bag is absolutely just stunning and I love it. Um, let's see here. I want to, <sighs> okay. The sleeved Nana, we're going to actually talk about your comment and what that comment was. Um, she said, um, oh, so also to, so the sleeve Nana said, I went on the internet to search for that belt after seeing that outfit. You know, I found that belt that was a top shop belt and I found it at Nordstrom's rack. I can't find another one like that, but I found a very similar like um, belt from Amazon. And so I will send you the link for that one and you can check it out and see if you like it. But it, it kind of has like, it's embroidered and it's a nice quality belt. It's just not beaded. And I'm perfectly fine with that because the Topshop belt one, the little beading on the sides are falling off. And I'm always like sticking it up underneath because I don't want anybody to see that my belt is falling apart. That's how long I keep my clothes. Um, so, okay, Valerie says, I saw that, oops, laugh out loud, oops, I was just trying to emphasize how much I liked your longer um, Outfit of the Days videos. That's perfectly fine, you know what? Um, it's just, I talked to Robert about that because Robert is the one that put the um, whole um, parameters on um, like things that people can and cannot say because I don't have a moderator on YouTube. So it kind of does the, like, it kind of like just keeps an eye out for me. All right, so this is the comment that we're gonna talk about. And it, she says, I wish I had the confidence to wear things that, uh, that show my arms. I love so many styles that are sleeveless, but I don't feel comfy wearing them. What I wanna talk to you about that is society, unfortunately, tells us that we have to look a, a certain way, all right? Whether you're over 50, 20, a mom in the pickup line, we're being bombarded by this image of what we're supposed to look like, all right? So we're like, oh yeah, no, I'm supposed to look like that. One of the things that they tell us when we're over 50 is that we have to hide our arms because our arms have a tendency to be like right here, okay? No big deal, whatever, all right? From head to toe, um, yes, from head to toe, I no longer look like I did when I was 20. I am a representation of who I am, but that's not, I, I don't have everything exactly like I did. And I am going to tell you right now, I am very proud of my arms, not for the way they look, not for the tattoos that are on them, but for the simple fact is my arms have gotten me to be 58 years old. These are the arms that I hug my loved ones with. This is exactly what I wrote back to you. This, my arms are the arms that I carried my children with. These are the arms that are, that are mine and I don't care what they look like. I don't care if I wear a sleeveless top and I go to do this and my arm does that. Who in a rat's behind cares if my arm does that? You know what? Then I'll wave like this. I don't, it, it, it just, again, we're robbing ourselves of happiness. We are sitting there and we're, we're being like, I want to wear this. This is what I want to tell the world today. This is my representation of me, but I can't because my body's not perfect. And it just makes me sad. It makes me sad that we have been stuck in such a box that we even have to second guess ourselves on what we wear because it might not be socially uh, acceptable. And I'm telling you right now, when I go shopping and I'll be in the junior section and there's cute little tank tops and there's cute little, even their t-shirts have like little cap sleeves and they're like right here, super cute. I go into, um, I go into the women's, women's section, meaning the older women's section, and all of a sudden the sleeves go all the way down to my elbow. I'm like, what is that? Why is my sleeve all the way down here? I don't want that. You know, it looks, it, to me, I don't like the way it looks on my body, period. So I'm like, no, I'm not gonna wear that. I'm gonna go back and get the cute little cap sleeves or I'm gonna wear a tank top. I rarely wear sleeves and I don't care. And I really, really, really want to, it's just, 
I am just exuding energy on the subject right now because I want you to know how important that is. So Linda says, everyone's perfect is different. Absolutely. Um, the Sleeve Nana says, I have always struggled with perfectionism and critical of myself. I am working on that. You know what? And that's just the thing. It's like, to me, I think being an individual is the greatest gift that I have in my life. Being just the best version of me is my superpower. And with my superpower, it means that I am 100% like nobody else. Nobody else has this gray hair. Nobody else has this nose. You know what? I have my dad's nose. And on video, every once in a while, I'll turn around and I'll be like, wow, um, that's, that's pretty intense. But I love it. That's my dad's nose. You know, nobody else has my body. And my body, again, is not like it was when it was 20, but it's mine. And I have, through time and through effort, have learned to embrace my body my differences and my imperfections. And I've said this before, and I am going to reiterate it again because it is so important that we need to think about confidence and we need to think about our journey and our life like a garden, all right? If you're sitting here today and you're like, I want to work on my confidence, I want to, I want to just start liking myself better, then you need to visualize it like this visualize it like you're starting a garden. You're starting a little herb garden in your backyard, all right? You, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the soil is, um, that it's all clear of rocks and weeds and like that. So you wanna clear your soil. You wanna put your little seed in the soil, you cover it up. And then you, the next day, you water it. The next day, you make sure there's no bugs on it. The next day, you make sure it's getting the right amount of, so, the right amount of sun. Because what you don't do is you don't plant the seed and then just walk away and leave it to its own demise. And our confidence is very much the same thing. We need to plant that seed of confidence and then every single day we need to go back to that garden and we need to make sure that it's flourishing. If we have to tell ourselves something kind, we tell ourselves something kind. If we have to remind ourselves that imperfection is okay, then that's what we do. So every single day you need to wake up and be like i am the best version of me that i can be today and that is all you have to worry about you don't have to worry about being perfect and you don't have to worry about being anybody else because you're being the best version of you um let's just see the sad part isn't as much as what others think is what um it's what i think i won't even wear certain things at home in private and it drives myself nuts to be part I'm honest. You know what? Truthfully, I am a hundred times meaner to myself than anybody could ever be. I can, my own inner voice is the meanest beep I've ever met in my life, but I'm aware of it. And I stand up to my inner voice now. For years, my inner voice won. For years, my inner voice put me down and told me I wasn't good enough. And now when my inner voice starts that, I'm all like... Not today. I see you, and I am not going to allow these negative thoughts in. Um, I like myself. Um, Linda says, I like myself now more than when I was 20. Absolutely. When I was 20, I was a bag of insecurities. I was in a bad relationship. I mean, here's the thing. is like people think that women over 50 get dull and beige and they have to hide in a corner, and that is so opposite of what it really is. I mean, what being over 50 is, is that you're finally a version of you that you're so confident you don't care what anybody else thinks. You know what? I am 58 years old and I have struggled to get here. I am not going to care what Lisa thinks about my outfit when I'm feeling all hot and sexy in denim on denim. That's just the way it is. Drema says, it's so hard when youth is glorified and age is not. We have to show our daughters we can, um, we can age and enjoy it. I really appreciate this conversation. Absolutely. And that's just the whole thing. Society says all sorts of stuff. I mean, society glorifies age and it glorifies being skinny and it glorifies being rich and it glorifies this and it glorifies that. I mean, 
it, there's like, I don't know. I think there might be one person in the world that fits every single parameter of what society says. And everybody else is just dingleberries in life because nobody is ever going to meet those unachievable standards. And it's up to us. It's up to us as individuals to either be, I am going to listen to what society says and I am going to be miserable every single day, or you're going to give society the big middle finger and be like, you know what? Keep talking, y'all. I am going to be back later when, um, uh, yes, and I will, I'll be back later and I'm just going to go enjoy life. And I tell you what, it's, here's the thing. I look at people like that Lisa on Instagram, the lady who was mean to me. I visualize it like this. All right. You have... You have a, a feral cat, all right? And this cat's all mean and it's all scruffy and it's like hissing and scratching at everybody. It's like, <laughs> that's Lisa on Instagram, all right? And then you have another cat and this cat's all like, hey, you know what? Life is pretty good. I'm just this happy little cat and I'm out here and I'm chasing balls and my owner just scratches me behind the ears and life is good. That feral cat is going to be all... Ah. All right. <sighs> I lost, um, I lost YouTube. Gosh, darn it. This is the first time that I've had, um, ah, no, nope, my battery went out. So, okay. All right. Uh, let me see if I can get enough. Yay! Hang in there, TikTok. I will be right with you. Nope. This is the first time my battery ran out. Oop. Hold on. Don't go away, TikTok. Ran out, uh, and I have to end the stream. Gosh darn it.